Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a mind-bending picture-in-picture optical illusion. I provided a Photoshop template that includes a background texture, a picture frame, and the inside of the frame. In addition, I provided this image of a faceless man in a derby hat, but feel free to replace it with another subject if you like. Their links are in my video's description below the video or in my project files. Before we begin, if you're not already a subscriber to Blue Lightning TV, hit that subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. The first step is to separate the subject from its background by making a selection around the subject. There are many ways to do this and I covered them all in my tutorials. To save some time, I already created a selection of the subject which I saved. When you save a selection, Photoshop saves it as an alpha channel in the Channels panel. If you don't see the panel, go to Window and Channels. Control click or Command click the alpha channel to revert it back into a selection. Press V on your keyboard to open your Move tool and drag it onto the Photoshop template I provided. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. Open back the Layers panel. To resize it, Open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. If you don't see the Transform's entire bounding box, press Ctrl or Command 0. Drag it over and go to a corner. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2015.5, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it out or in. If you're using CC 2015.5 or later, just press Alt or Option as you drag it. Position it so the top of your subject is hiding this corner of the frame. Then press Enter or Return. Let's cast a drop shadow from our subject. Double click the layer to open its layer style window. Click Drop Shadow. The blend mode is Multiply, the color is Black, the opacity is 50%, and the angle is 50 degrees. The distance is 100 pixels, the spread is 0, and the size is 60 pixels. The contour is linear. If you see a slight white fringe around the perimeter of the image, go to Layer, Matting, and Defringe. Defringe it 1 pixel. We'll hide the top layer so we can see the entire frame under it. We'll copy the drop shadow to the frame by going to the drop shadow and pressing and holding Alt or Option as you drag a copy of it onto the frame layer. Double click it to see it in the layer style window. Since the frame is closer to the wall than our subject is, let's reduce the distance of the shadow to 50 pixels and the size of its softness to 43 pixels. Make the subject visible and active. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. We'll place all the layers below it into a folder. To do this, make the subject below it active and shift click the background to make all the layers between them active as well. Press Ctrl or Command G. We'll make four copies of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J four times. Name the top copy 5, the layer below it 4, and so on. Hide the top 4 copies and open folder 1. We'll hide the subject in this folder since a copy of it is at the top of our layers panel. Control click or command click the thumbnail of the inside frame to make a selection of its shape. Close the folder and make Folder 2 visible and active. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to Folder 2. Click off the Chain Link icon to unlink the layer mask and the folder. This allows us to resize and reposition the contents of the folder independent of the layer mask. Make the folder active and open your Transform tool. Go to a corner. Drag it in and position it so the background fits inside the frame. 
Then press Enter or Return. Open Folder 2 and make the subject active. Go to the smaller subject and press and hold Shift as you drag it across until the top of it hides the corner of the frame. Pressing Shift kept the subject perfectly horizontal as you dragged it across. Next, we'll adjust its drop shadow. Double click the drop shadow to open it in the layer style window. I'll drag the window over so we can see it. Drag the size to 0 so we can clearly see the drop shadow. Drag the angle approximately between 135 and 140 degrees so the drop shadow is now cast down to the right of the subject. We'll bring the shadow closer to the subject by dragging the distance to 65 pixels. We'll soften it by dragging the size between 25 and 30 pixels. Once we add the next image inside the smaller frame, the defringe filter won't be enough to hide white fringing along the edge of the subject. What will hide it is to make a copy of the subject, hide the effect of the copy, and drag the layer directly below the other subject. We'll hide the area of the smaller subject that extends past the inside of the frame by going to the layer mask and pressing and holding Alt or Option as you drag a copy of it onto the active layer. Control click or command click the inside frame of Folder 2 to make a selection of its shape. Close Folder 2 and make Folder 3 active. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to Folder 3. Click off the chain link icon and make the layer visible and click the folder to make it active. Open your Transform tool, and as before, resize it, and position it so the background fits into the frame. Open Folder 3, and make the subject active. Make the drop shadow visible, and double click it to see it in the Layer Style window. I'll move it over so we can see the smaller subject. As before, drag the size to 0 so we can clearly see the drop shadow. Drag the distance to 45 pixels or you can type it in. Make the size approximately 16 pixels. Make a copy of it and hide its drop shadow. Drag it up below the other subject. Open Folder 2 and control click or command click the thumbnail of the inside frame to make a selection of its shape. Close Folder 2 and click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to this active layer. Control click or command click the inside frame in Folder 3 to make a selection of its shape. Close Folder 3 and make Folder 4 active. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to Folder 4. Click off the Chain Link icon and make the layer visible and click the folder to make it active. Open your Transform tool and as you did earlier, size and position the background to the inside of the frame. Continue these steps to add as many pictures and pictures as you want, and when you have the smallest picture inside the frame, we'll replace the white background with the gray background. To do this, open Folder 5 and hide the inside frame. Lastly, we'll add a light mist the further in our picture and picture goes. Close Folder 5 and make the layer that's below the top layer active. Make a new layer and go to the layer mask of Folder 2. Control click or Command click it to make a selection of its shape. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. Make the empty layer active and reduce the opacity to 20%. Open your brush tool. If your foreground color isn't white, press X to invert them. 
Open your brush picker and pick a soft round brush. Make its size 800 pixels and its hardness 0%. Its opacity and flow are both 100%. Go to the middle of the smallest frame and click once. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.